Walt Disney's The Aristocats. Marie, you are going to be as beautiful as your mother, said Madame. Isn't she, Duchess? Duchess smiled. She and her three kittens lived with Madame in a beautiful house in Paris. The cats loved Madame, and she loved them. The kittens were very talented. Toulouse was learning to paint, Marie was learning to sing, and Berlois was learning to play the piano. Madame appreciated the kitten's talent, but Edgar the butler did not appreciate the mess they made. I am not a butler, he grumbled to himself. I am a cat sitter for four spoiled aristocats. One day, Madame's lawyer stopped by for a visit. George, I would love to leave my fortune to my beloved cats, Madame told him. I'm sure Edgar will be glad to take care of them when I'm gone. Edgar heard everything Madame said, but he was not glad at all. Those cats must go, Edgar muttered. That night the greedy butler put sleeping pills in the cat's cream. A slip of the hand and it's off to dreamland, he chuckled. The pills went plip-plop into the pot. I'll take them far away, then Madam will leave her fortune to me. Dinner was delicious. The cats gladly shared it with their friend Roquefort the mouse. Roquefort dipped his cracker into the bowl. Mmm, my compliments to the chef, he said. It's cream a la Edgar, Marie told him. Roquefort went to get another cracker, but he fell asleep as soon as he reached his hole. Soon all the cats were sound asleep too. Edgar carefully put them in their basket. Madame had gone to bed. The house was quiet. Edgar drove the cats far away from the city. These cats will never find their way back to Paris, the butler said to himself. Edgar's noisy motorcycle rumbled along the road, but Duchess and her kittens didn't wake up. Suddenly, the motorcycle hit a large bump in the road. Edgar's hat flew off his head. The basket full of sleeping cats bounced out of the sidecar. It landed under a bridge, but Edgar didn't stop. Instead, he hurried back to the city. When they woke up the next morning, Duchess and the kittens had a very unpleasant surprise. Where are we, Mama? asked Toulouse. Don't worry, children, Duchess assured them. I will find a way for us to get back to Madame. But she did not know what to do. Just then, Duchess saw another cat. He was just an alley cat, but he looked very friendly. Hi there, called the cat. The name's Abraham DeLacy Giuseppe Casey Thomas O'Malley. What's yours? Duchess, she answered. Beautiful, just like those blue eyes. O'Malley purred. Duchess blushed. Would you tell us how to get back to the city? How are you, fair lady? replied O'Malley. Well, I'll take you there on my magic carpet. Hooray! Hooray! Cheered the kittens. One magic carpet is coming up. O'Malley shouted. He pointed to a milk truck rattling down the road. O'Malley jumped onto the front of the milk truck. He hissed. He howled. The truck screeched to a halt. The driver got out of the truck to look for O'Malley. Where is that day? The driver wondered. He didn't see who was climbing into the back of his truck. O'Malley's magic carpet had plenty of milk. Duchess and the kittens enjoyed their breakfast, but soon the driver noticed his passengers. Jump! cried O'Malley. The cats jumped out of the milk truck. Don't worry, he told Duchess. I'll make sure you get back home. Just follow me, said O'Malley. He led them through the pretty countryside. O'Malley is so smart, said Marie. O'Malley is so brave, said Toulouse. When I grow up, said Berlois, I am going to be just like O'Malley. They came to some railroad tracks. O'Malley decided to follow the tracks to the city. 
As they walked across a railroad bridge, the kittens pretended to be a train. Choo choo, choo choo, hummed Marie. Clickety clack, clickety clack, buzzed Burlois. Woo hoo, whistled Toulouse. Woo woo, answered a real train, and it was right behind them. Don't panic, shouted O'Malley. Everyone got under the tracks just in time. Hold on, children, Duchess called, but the train shook the bridge and Marie lost her grip. Mama! She cried as she fell into the cold water below. O'Malley did a daring dive and quickly pulled Marie out of the river. Thank you, Thomas, said Duchess gratefully. You have saved my daughter's life. Back in Paris, the newspapers confirmed that the cats had been catnapped. Roquefort was looking for clues. He was talking to Frou-Frou the horse when Edgar appeared. The butler seemed upset. My hat! He cried. If they find it, they'll know I'm the catnapper. Now Roquefort knew the truth, but where were his friends? His friends were in Paris. I can stand my penthouse pad for the night, O'Malley said. He led them up to the rooftops. Wow, this is great, exclaimed Toulouse. Music drifted out of an open skylight. Listen to that music, said Bergois. That's jazz, O'Malley told him. And those musicians are friends of mine. They went inside. O'Malley introduced Duchess to Scat Cat and the band. O'Malley and Scat Cat sang a song. Everyone danced. It isn't Beethoven, Mama, but it sure bounces, giggled Burlois. Let's swing it, Thomas, laughed Duchess. They had lots of fun. After the party was over, Duchess and O'Malley admired the full moon. I'm going to miss you, beautiful. And those kittens, too, admitted O'Malley. We will miss you, Duchess said softly. But tomorrow we must go home to Madame. I'm sure she's very worried. I guess you know best, sighed O'Malley. The kittens were watching from a window. Well, we almost had a father, Burlois said quietly. When Edgar opened the door the next morning, he got the shock of his life. The cats had returned. Me first! Me first! cried Marie. The kittens ran into the house. I'll never forget you, Thomas O'Malley, purred Duchess. So long, the alley cat replied sadly. As soon as the door was closed, Edgar put the cats in a sack. I'll send these cats to Timbuktu, he declared. Edgar locked them in a trunk in the barn. Then he left to call for a shipping van. Luckily, Roquefort had seen everything. The brave mouse ran for help. He found O'Malley first. O'Malley told the mouse to get Scat Cat and his band to help, too. When Edgar returned to the barn, he had a big surprise waiting for him. Scat Cat and his band took care of Edgar. Meanwhile, Roquefort and O'Malley freed Duchess and the kittens. Duchess and the kittens quickly jumped out of the trunk. Then Frou-Frou pushed Edgar in. After thanking their friends, Duchess and the kittens had a happy reunion with Madame. O'Malley went along. Since Duchess seemed fond of O'Malley, Madame invited him to stay. The shipping van came. Edgar was driven off to Timbuktu. Madame never saw him again, so she told her lawyer to change her will. Very well, said George. Scratch one butler. And with a few more strokes of the pen, O'Malley was added to the will. O'Malley was a very good father. With a bit of grooming, he was also a fine aristocrat. The cats made such a fine family that Madame decided to take a family picture. You know, Madame said, if Edgar had only known about the will, 
I'm sure he never would have left, especially since I've decided to open my home to all the cats of Paris. Duchess and O'Malley just smiled. <laughs>